Where are we today, 2009? We're in a situation where both the church and, and the church and the family is under attack. First thing we need to do is confront our sin, our disease. And there is that. I wish I had more encouraging news for you today. But let me first lay the basis we're in danger. This is like radiation that heats the air around us. We are susceptible. We are susceptible. And that risk is our homes and our testimony, our churches, and the testimony of our church. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 5. Paul, same writer, says, For this do you know that no fornicator, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the sons of disobedience. I hope that as we cover Ephesians and the evening's Proverbs, that I have not allowed you to get lazy regarding your situation. If you had some physical disease, and I knew its answer, its relief, deliverance from such, I did not tell you it would not, would not be loving. It would be unchristlike. I must tell you as a believer, not as necessarily a preacher, I must tell you there is an enemy. And heaven has denied us. God has denied us. If our love is fornication, if our love is, is covetousness, if we love being like the world, the Bible says, how can we call ourselves lovers of God? And we deny the belief in the protestation we're lovers of God by the way we live. Stop living outrageously before the king. And say at the same time to love the king. The Bible says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. There is a relationship between one's new life, obedience, a, cha a change regarding sin, and our acceptance of our reaction to sin, being known in verse 5, no such shall have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And some of us, I've had this feeling before too, I'm just worried about getting to that for today, Pastor, as I've listened to the pastor. I'm just worried about today and tomorrow. I'm not worried about heaven and certainly not about whether a palace or an apartment in heaven. No, today. Every one of us thinking about humility in our, our sinful state. 
every one of us is a loser. Everyone, and I'm talking about many of the world's Christ here, I'm talking about how every one of us is a loser. God loves them, God he loves losers. His care for the stranger, for the widow, for the orphan, the poor. God, thank God he is a lover of people and gives hope because there's hope through Jesus Christ. But he would be a poor teacher if he had in his curriculum the reflexes of pleasing of us when we live in defiance of him. It's about time we realize that the truth is even pointed to us individually. We cannot receive the blessing of Almighty God and the richness of the blessing that he would desire to give us when we live in contradistinction to everything that he is about. That a holy God should shower on holy ones with his blessing. Expectation of such is an expectation that I think stretches grace at its further limits to outrageous tension. You cannot live in defiance of God and still say, you're going to have his blessing. I believe he will save your soul. You come by faith and God is gracious and he will fulfill his promise and you come by way of Jesus Christ. Confessing sin and turning from your sin, he will receive you by his promise. But don't be so foolish as to think that his desire for you is going to change as far as his desire for you to change. There is more to being a Christian than a decision on your knees, at the altar, or at your own bedside. Those are good things. Those are good things. It's like a wedding, a wedding. It's not marriage. The wedding ceremony is about the beginning. It is the initiation of marriage. A real marriage, a real relationship with God comes in the joy of at the ceremony and following and following our God that is intent on improving our relationship. Most of us we're just fooling around. We keep in the back of our mind this thought that, that we are what it is about, that it's not God. My friends, may be known Jesus Christ is Lord and He claims that Lordship in your own life and don't expect the blessing of God when you live outside of his plan. So we look today, we have a day in which there is despising of any revelation as to what God wants. We're more concerned about what we want what is comfortable. And so these words have so little power on us. These words, A, no other gods. No other gods. Exodus value. No carved images. None. No carved images to try to represent. No name of God in vain, taken in vain. Sabbath. Recognize the Sabbath. Be careful. Honor your mother and your father. May I insist to you, you cannot be a good child of God, a servant of God's blessed by God if you abuse or neglect your mother or your father. You and I are called not to murder. We are called to be careful as we respect the lives of other human beings. No murder! No murder! We are called not to commit adultery. And one of the tragedies of the day, as some of us know it, is we find it hard to find reasons not to commit adultery today. And it's so pervasive, unforgive us, and fornication seems our due. And as we do, we lose the blessing of God. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. What is that? It's basically lying. Have you ever told a lie? Told the lies this week. I bet you most of us have told a lie since this week started. It was started about 12 hours ago. You say, Pastor, I've only been awake about three hours. You've probably lied in that amount of time. Your wife says, How much you wake this morning, honey? Or you 
U.S. Treasury.
imagine the doorbell ringing and Jesus Christ is on the other side of the door. And you open that door and you invite Jesus in. Of course, you're wondering already what kind of shape is the house in. And Munger takes Jesus into the living room. And there is a humongous entertainment system covering the entirety of a wall, a wall, and a collection of DVDs and everything else. Such a boastful kind of thing to show anybody else, but to show Jesus. Oh, let me show you another movie, Jesus. You don't want to see the, the titles on those DVDs you got. You go into the library, and there are stacks of library books, but also your own possessions. But you have there also some magazines, and a mother's account, like this Jesus walks in, and you suddenly feel a little ashamed that Jesus would, you know, let's try another room, Jesus. And it goes to another room, go to the room of our house, of the heart of our heart. And Jesus, we have the forwardness to show our Savior, the Holy One, some of what our life involves. We think too late to our shame. He's seeing it all. And the truth is, right now, he's aware of exactly how we live. Exactly how we live. And David said, there's so much I cannot do anything about. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I, I, I do. And I'm going to live as though I hate the work of those who turn aside. I hate it. I hate it. And I live accordingly. And one of the things that will result, verse 3 says, none of this is going to attach to me. It's not going to cling to me. The odor of this you won't catch it on my clothes. You won't catch it on my breath. You won't catch it on that videotape that show my life in heaven someday. I eschew it. I eschew it. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. 